Gentlemen, what is going on? We've got some movement in the charts tonight. And we're going to be talking about that very, very shortly. We've had a big day today. Tesla's declared its earnings. Things look pretty decent. Uh, again, you know what the story is. The doomsday clock has been adjusted one more time to factor in overseas tensions. Whilst everything has been going up, weaponry has been sent everywhere, all over to Ukraine. What's going on? The debt is still there. Now, we had one great bear, Mr. Jeremy Grantham, who did say that the bubble's not burst just yet. And we've got to factor that in, ladies and gentlemen. And in tonight's live, we're going to cover a couple of things. We're going to talk about this debt story and we're going to look at the debt that's been accumulated by the UK, by China, by the US and cross-reference what the current story is. Inflation seems to be cooling, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what's fueling the markets. Now, remember, all these earnings announcements are based on December's input. So that's where everything is right now. It's based on previous incomes and what have you. Now we're going to start seeing in the next quarter what it really is like having such a high interest rate. Investors right now are going in for it and they're taking advantage of this move. Okay, so we're going to go dive into that very shortly. Mad love and respect everyone for passing through to tonight's live. Checking in with you all. Here we go. <laughs> this bull trap is harsh. 8K was the new 3K. <laughs> Listen, we didn't say 8K was going to happen overnight. And you know what? Keep bringing that flavor to me. Every time Bitcoin moves up a dollar, when 8K, Tino, let's bring it. I'm ready for you. But we just need to understand jokes aside, ladies and gentlemen. All right. The moves that are happening right now is a great way for you to take advantage and pull some money out of the marketplace because we can't ignore what's going on. The economy is slowing down. And when you ask yourself why it's moving up so fast, I mean, let's get to the charts, man. Hold on a second. Bitcoin is doing some numbers right now. Here we go. Let's check this out. Here we are. All right, then. So Bitcoin right now is moving up and aggressively at that. Now, if we just cross-reference a couple of movements in Bitcoin, over here, you have got Bitcoin when it hit the low of 17,590, okay? The move from that low all the way to the top came in at around 42% move, okay? And it worked its way up into this previous vector candle region where market makers like to place their orders and they've realized a return on their investment. Happy days. Now, let's look at this current move. If we now look before Bitcoin pumped up, ladies and gentlemen, you can see it's now gone 51% from this low. From the actual low of 15,500, it's moved up towards 51%. So if we actually factor in the current movement, Bitcoin is up nearly 53% from its low. Okay, that is a nice move. All right, cool. What has it gained? It hasn't gained that much ground because it's only come back into these previous vector regions right here. Now, this is the four hour time frame to put it into perspective. Look at this. This is where Bitcoin's price is right now. 23,702. This is what you do to gauge the worthiness of a move. What has it taken back? Where has it gone above? Has it gone above a point where they previously sold from? Because although Bitcoin is moving up, it's heading into the last zone that it sold from. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for Bitcoin to go there to show proof that this move can continue. That's what you're waiting for. Now, it doesn't mean you wait for it until it goes there. You might want to take advantage of this little flavor that Bitcoin's bringing to the charts right now. Look at that bad boy right there. Anyone running longs, happy days. The validation of the 50 EMA test. If you move closer, you can see. Look at that. Stopping volume candle comes in today. And it's been a tricky couple of days, ladies and gentlemen, in the marketplace. There's no word about that. OK, it has been a tricky couple of days, but Bitcoin gives us the stopping volume candle and then they shift out to the upside. And this is fueled by Tesla's earnings. Now, going over to the chart over here, you can see bright as day. We have got Bitcoin coming back into these regions right here. And we've got this zone around the 24,000 zone. A lot of people have been speaking about this area. Top side right there. This is the next zone of liquidity that they'd really want to be working. That's the beautiful spot. And then you've got this bad boy right here. Top side, you have got. This vector candle right there at 24.865. Who's getting the pain? Who's paying the price? Let's just go over to our products right here, heat map, and have a look at the liquidations that have just been eaten in the chart, ladies and gentlemen. What's chat saying? How are we this evening? 
bear trap tonight 8k tomorrow boys tino when dump <laughs> do you know what guys we're all in the idea of uncertainty okay so those of you who are saying when 8k tino are telling me that you have the almanac for bitcoin's price movement because you knew it would never go down the day i said it but i never said it to go down at that day so no one's right okay that's how it works but never mind bitcoin 8k i must still hold to it you don't like it you don't like it but look at the shorts that are being eaten alive that's why i'm a scalper ladies and gentlemen we get in we get out we take advantage of these moves swing traders holders this is a time where you start to cash in on this flavor okay how long it goes up for well we'll go to the chart for a split second and just look at how aggressive this move has been to the upside look at this if we count the, the phases you've had one push up here look this is one push. This would be a second push. This would be the third push. All right. By the way, the market moves. Okay. So we've got one, two, three pushes up. As long as I'm going to say it to you right now, as long as Bitcoin stays above the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame. Now, this is for swing traders and holders. If it stays above the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame, there's no reason for you to get rid of your positions. Okay. That's not financial advice. That's just common sense. All right. But if it starts to break down key moving averages on higher time frames, then you're going to start considering, OK, maybe I need to start preserving my capital. If we actually go over to this area here, you can see here that investors should use rallies. Check this out. Investors should use rallies to reduce exposure to the equity market, according to Richard Saperstein at Treasury Partners. Slow economic growth caused by the Fed's tightening and its impact on corporate earnings will likely be priced into stocks over the next several months. All right, so if we take that narrative that they're going to price in the fact that the Fed has increased interest rates, we're going to then look at the charts and say, okay, then has the market dismissed it? This is all being fueled by the tech market. Tesla puts out its earnings, Microsoft puts out its earnings, and everyone has just rushed to the charts. Now, those people that are taking advantage of this flavor, all right, should be taking some profits. It's not about, I, I caught the Bitcoin bottom at 15K. Oh, it doesn't matter. You should have caught Bitcoin when it was at a dollar. That is the gracious catch from a low or when a coin is priced at whatever point it is. What I'm trying to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, is... If Bitcoin goes from this point right here and you guys tell me, do you think this is the absolute bottom for Bitcoin? Because it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. If there's overseas tension building up and the doomsday clock has been adjusted, like look, look at this doomsday clock, a time of unprecedented danger. It is 90 seconds to midnight. And the assumption is once midnight hits, catastrophe is hitting. All right. The Science and Security Board Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists move the hands of the doomsday clock forward, though not exclusively because of the mounting dangers of war in the Ukraine. That's what they're basing it on. All right. Now, look, can we make that assumption? Oh, Bitcoin pulling back down again. That's a bit of sharp play. Look, there's no problem in paying yourselves because this sort of thing happens. And this is why I'm always going to say to you, holders and do you know what? Holders and swing traders would do great to behave like scalpers. What do I mean? You look at the chart, you've made some profit. Take it. Take some of it. If you've got $1,000 invested in a position, listen. If you have $1,000 invested in a position, where whatever means you have, whether it's leverage or not, and you've got profit, take 25% of it. As it keeps moving up, take another 25%. As it keeps going, take another 25% because you guys are all using leverage, assuming you're all using leverage, okay? Another move up will pretty much cover that 25% that you withdrew, all right, or move down. What I'm trying to say is get into the habit of paying yourselves and you can ride moves all the time. You can just keep on taking money from the charts while still being in a position. Take 25% happy days. There's no problem in doing that and it's not a bad thing. It's called risk management. You're doing things properly. That's what you've got to do in this market. If you've got articles across the board, even warning you and saying, look, just take some money. Now, look, they, they, look even the um, Sepstein said, look, we've not been impressed by the quality of earnings in recent weeks. Looking forward, margins remain at risk. Now, listen, going into tomorrow is a core price index release. This is going to be the key inflation measure for the Fed tomorrow. Okay. We already know that the market is going to gap up because Tesla's done great. If you go back into the charts itself, 
We'll have a look at what Euro's doing. See, Euro ain't really moving. More importantly, gold is still climbing up, but ever so shot, slowing down a little bit. We'll get into gold in a second, ladies and gentlemen. Oil is pulling back ever so slightly, but NASDAQ futures themselves, there, everything is closed right now, but they will be reopening shortly, and they're going to price in what's going on in the charts, especially with Tesla. So everything that's happening in the marketplace, guys, look, anything that is happening right now in the marketplace is solely based off news. Like I said to you, we're in a macro-driven environment. All right. Bitcoin's fast move up is exciting. Don't get it twisted. I want you guys to succeed and pick up that bag and earn yourself some Bitcoin and see returns on it. All right. I'm trying to deliver the picture here. It's going to the pan. Do you understand? Look at this. This is the UK right now. OK. How much money does the UK owe? Well, let's just look at how much Europe owes, okay? This is the debt to ratio, GDP debt ratio chart, okay? So figure two shows, 101.9% of its GDP, the UK general government gross debt at the end of quarter 22 was 15.5% points up above the EU average, all right? So these are all the countries in the European Union and where they currently stand with their debt, okay? Now, Greece is obviously at the top, and they've got 182% of their GDP. So 182% of their income is on debt, all right? That's, that's crazy. Well, of course, you know what happened with Greece. Let's go to China. National debt of China, all right? $7 trillion, around 45% of its GDP. And what's the GDP? How, how's this money owed? So it comes from central government, local governments, government branches, and state organizations, all right? Then you've got the US, okay? They are at 121.5% GDP. These are not sustained figures. Someone said to me, don't talk about the debt ceiling, Tina, because they're pumping the markets with money and it's a good thing. Okay, cool. I won't mention the debt ceiling, but the US has hit near enough the debt ceiling. They keep on increasing it. Then what's going to happen? Something has to blow. Do you understand? Something has to give. It might not be directly, oh, the debt ceiling has caused the financial crisis. No, because the last financial crisis in 2007, 2008 was to do with the subprime mortgages. And that had everyone because everyone was buying and selling the swaps that those mortgages were all coupled together with. OK, the, the exposure as such. And then it all collapsed when it happened for the US. It happened for the UK and the European Union itself. OK, so look, I'm not here to like. I'm not saying I don't want you to succeed, all right? But we've got to have some wit about ourselves and just look at the bigger picture, because if we don't, we will be married to these moves, okay? We will be married to the idea that, look, look what Bitcoin's just done. It's just eaten a lot of liquidity in the chart right now. And now we've just got more commitment by longs. We've got $610 billion million worth of longs at 22,250. But then when we look at the bigger picture, this is on the 12 hour chart. If we look at the one month candle, how has everyone been so far in the month? So for the last 25 days, where has people's heads been in terms of liquidity and committing it to the marketplace? We'll check this out right here when this bad boy decides to roll out and do some flavor. Here we go. Look at that. The last clean zone. There are guys who are fighting the shorts. There are guys that are in disbelief that Bitcoin is going to go down. Okay. Now, these guys up here in the shorts at 25,100, there's 10 billion, $10.8 billion worth of short liquidations. These guys might be the guys that are thinking, hold on a second, Bitcoin has to come down. The market is due for a reset. The market's going to collapse. The debt is too much. Inflation is still high. Now, look, these guys down here, $12.6 billion worth of long liquidations at 17000 Do you understand what that means? They're coming back to that point at some stage. So if you are in the victorious move and you've witnessed price go to the upside and you're in a trade right now, pay yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I said to you, the holder and the swing trader will benefit from thinking like a scalper because he sees money, take some of it out. There's no harm in that. Chat, what are you saying? Don't always be a bear. Embrace the pump. Listen, I have no regard or I am not disregarding this pump. I want it to go up. I want it to go down. I've given you my Bitcoin projection. No one's gone in anything that low, but I've given you my logic on it based on the system that I use to trade. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. 
We've been at this for a little while now, trying to catch these moves to the upside. Gave you one bold price projection on Bitcoin going to 8K, and I have met it with force, ladies and gentlemen. But if you are new, you want to get access to this indicator, it is free of charge. Pinned to the top of the chat is the Traders Reality website where you follow the four steps and you can actually download this free of charge. Now, if you want to go into more detail with the hybrid, check out the Patreon. We had a bit of fun today in that area as well. So here we are. Like I said to you, I'm not against you all. I want Bitcoin to go up because I understand the nature of the game. It's all about making money, yeah? But don't be married to the pump. I'll embrace the pump. I ain't married to it. I ain't married to the idea of it going down. I'm just saying 8K because I know it winds up a few people and they give me their two cents as to why. Before you get enough people coming together telling you why it won't, you then sit there and you think, shit, man, I may not, I should not have said that 8K. But let's just look at the bigger picture here. What's going on in the marketplace? Bitcoin's only moving up because of Tesla. Let's make that assumption. Yeah, it's only moving up because Tesla's had a good day. Microsoft had a good day yesterday. Is it moving up to absorb the benefit of the improved e economic situation? But Microsoft's saying that things aren't looking good. Remember, this is for December. What about in the next quarter? How's that going to impact us? Let's just go back into the chart a second. So, you know, no boom a moment, but I think we're going to visit 25K, 26 zone to clear that vector candle on the four hour. If it goes to that point, cool. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? That's the key thing. You know, if it can achieve that point, happy days. But let's just go on this idea here. Who the, who the hell was that? Someone's shouting in my house. Not my house. Okay, cool. Look, this is the four hour vector my guy's talking about. This area here. I'll take the 24K zone. 24, no, 25,000 zone. That's where that goes. Okay, as long as Bitcoin on the four hour time frame stays above the 50 EMA, you have no reason to get rid of your trade. Take profits, but you have no reason to get out. But look at the trickery right here. How many people would have got a notification from Binance, from Bybit? And this is another thing as well. Just recently, Binance did say that people will be limited to making withdrawals of anything below $100,000, okay? via the swift banking system do you think that's in place because binance wants to prevent a bank run not what happened not so long ago binance experienced a mad amount of withdrawals okay and then prior to that with the ftx scandal all these companies in cryptocurrency their their customers were just withdrawing liquidity now if you're only allowed to withdraw anything anything above 100k that kind of limits it down and traps people's liquidity in those exchanges. Who knows? We're speculating because that's what this game's about, ladies and gentlemen. Pure speculation. It's the game of uncertainty. A lot of people have just experienced loss right now. Some people have experienced win. It's the ones that win that pay themselves continuously. Okay? Hope that verifies that for you, my brother. Let's just go and have a look at what else is actually moving. Let's have a look at some altcoins right now. Solana. Mm, given that Bitcoin's made this big move, alts ain't really moving. Jasmine, same story. Luna C, nah. H bar, got a wick up there that we could come back to if it does serve its purpose when Bitcoin's done with its move. XRP, 42, yeah, I'm not really feeling this flavor. Why is it not moving up as much as we would expect it? Ethereum hasn't really gained much ground. Full recovery of the red vector candle right there with the idea that this next candle could get recovered. USDT taking a nosedive. That is very good. As long as USDT is going down, that's happy days. Matic. Matic coming up and consolidating in this area. I'm not really impressed. This is just a Bitcoin flavor. That's all it is, ladies and gentlemen. What else are you saying? Fast move is, yeah, look, fast move is the false move, ladies and gentlemen. That is true. I say that all the time. How many times do you see it happening in the markets? They move it up aggressively to move it back down again. We have got core price index coming out month on month at half past one tomorrow GMT. OK, now this is very important as it's a key measure for the Fed. OK, so if this bad boy comes in lower, we're probably going to see more price action to the upside. All right.
but I'm not going to help. I, you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is a problem. This bad boy, the debt is a problem. The ratio is a debt, yet there's still more money to be sent overseas to facilitate certain overseas tensions. OK, but then you've got this bad boy. The inverted yield curve. When this bad boy, courtesy of a gentleman in the comments section, he was kind enough to let me know that basically when this bad boy goes back up again and stops going down, then that's when you have yourself a recession. OK, this is an indicator and has done well in the last seven recessions to tell us the following. The unusual drop of yields on longer term debt below yields on short term debt of the same credit quality. That basically means that you earn more money for a shorter period of time as you would over a longer period of time. That's not good because then that means that people aren't holding liquidity and giving it to the government in bonds wise to invest. They want it now rather than 30 years or 10 year bonds or five year bonds. You see what I'm saying? So the less time they're investing money the worser it is. So when that chart actually starts to invert back up, we'll kind of see that investors are looking to favor the longer term. But then you see articles like this bad boy over here, where you've got, where was it? Where's my article? I think it's here. Not impressed by the quality earnings. I said it. The U yeah, look, this is where we got the US send Ukraine. I had an article, okay, which was talking about the idea that even though tech is doing well, the marketplace is not showing those true signs just yet. Go into Euro a second. Euro's coming up, doing very well right there, going up into that zone, hitting the top side of the vectors. Gold at the same token is climbing up, ladies and gentlemen, and that is a good sign for a continuation. But gold is coming up into a very interesting point in the chart. You look left. It's only recovering the previous vectors you see his big red vector here. Look, if gold can get to 1970, happy days for any gold traders out there. And if you do hold gold and you held it from a very low point, then you're probably going to see a nice little return on gold. But some of the heavyweights are talking about make sure you buy gold. That's all they're saying. Make sure you pick up gold. Pound sterling itself only had an article not so long ago saying that the UK may get out of recession sooner than expected. And this is what really frustrates the life out of me. Two, three days ago, they were saying that recession is inevitable. Now, all of a sudden, recession is going to not be a problem. You've got the same with the US, with the Fed, talking about a soft landing. Well, is it going to be a soft landing? They're going to increase the interest rates again on February the 1st. Remember, FOMC is meeting up. Put this in your calendar, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, or well, not next week, but February the 1st, we are going to be bringing that fire. I will be streaming for this bad boy. FOMC statement, FOMC press conference. We're going to see exactly what they have to say about everything but just quickly now going over to bitcoin for one more moment bitcoin right now going to smaller time frames 15 minute time frame you've seen a nice little pump to the upside with in my opinion the anticipation of this week's um cp um core price index data quite frankly bitcoin hasn't really done much in my opinion for the hybrid system in the sense where it's not really gone away from the psychological ranges the psychological ranges are these two orange lines right here which is in essence the open the high and the low at the start of every new trading week and it's on the assumption that this is where the market maker builds his spread for the week and he plays off the zone itself you'll see that right there where he goes up and down inside of this region and effectively needs to break out of that zone so if breakout traders or bull flag traders are looking at this right now they would have been sucked in with the breakout so now lots of traders positions are live so bitcoin's moved away from the 50 ema but the 50 ema on the 50 minute time frame has been pretty flat so we don't really have that volatility in the chart so a move like this Make sure you pay yourselves and get ready for the next setup, okay? Mad love, Tino. Your wife left you or what? No, I I, I, I did that. But um, yeah, different story. But anyways, <laughs> there's so many comments that I could read. Why did I read my guy's comment? So many comments. Why have I picked up on that comment right there? What's good, ladies and gentlemen? 300 of you like the stream. Mad love and respect to all you people liking the stream. If you are new, make sure you do like the stream. But I'm going to tell you now. This move. I don't care if you don't like what I say about Bitcoin going to 8K. But take away from this live stream the idea of taking money out of the market. Okay? 
because there's no point in just keeping it in there, finding the best call. You called Bitcoin's top, you called Bitcoin's bottom. Cool. Now pay yourself if you're in that trade. All right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, mad love and respect. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We are close to the 100K mark. And God bless every single one of you for helping us get there. We'll be checking in tomorrow to see what madness will unfold with the core price index. Again, pay yourselves and get yourself ready for tomorrow. Mad love and respect, ladies and gentlemen. Take care of yourselves. Peace.